right after I got my job, I was sent to a high-level leadership training. It was a great week, and at the end of the week, we um, sat in a room and there was this panel of experts uh, in their field, and the moderator actually asked the question, could you talk about a mistake and what you've learned from it? And I was just sitting there with my pen poised, waiting to you know, take notes, feeling like this would be really comforting. But no one shared a mistake story. You know, everyone, people said, oh, mistakes are so valuable. You learn so much from your mistakes. But no one really um, told a, a story about an actual mistake. And then soon after, I was um, watching uh, via video another panel that was taking place in DC. It was part of this collaboration among women's colleges uh, with the State Department. And a congresswoman uh, introduced a panel of women in government. And her very first question was, again, could you talk about a mistake at work and what you've learned from it? And again, the answers were, well, there was someone in the military who said, we don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> someone else um, said, you know, I really, I majored in the wrong thing in college. But people, you know, in front of their high-level peers weren't willing to open up. And I, you know, I think that's understandable. But it, started to make me see there was this real void um, in kind of the, the conversation about women work and leadership. And that's why I wanted to write the book, Mistakes I Made at Work. Carol Dweck, she's a psychologist um, from Stanford who um, studies uh, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And she told me a great story about her time in graduate school at Yale where she admired, she so admired this professor, Seymour Saracen. And then one day she was sitting in her advisor's office and he said to her, Seymour Saracen thinks you're really smart. And she felt great. She kind of was just sitting there basking in the glow of the approval of this guy. After that, she avoided him for the rest of her graduate career. She never talked to this guy, Seymour <laughs> Saracen, once because she didn't want his impression of her to be changed in any way. <laughs> she thought, you know, if I, you know, who knows, maybe if he really gets to know me, he won't think I'm as smart. So looking back, she says that she really feels like she missed out on an opportunity to do what might have been really interesting research, because he was doing research that, was, um, that she found fascinating. And she also says that she didn't even realize at the time that um, the research she was doing at Yale was me-search. So she was really, she was studying how kids dealt with failure. And what her um, work ended up being about was uh, the idea of, you know, do you see ability as something as, that's fixed, that you can't change, or can ability grow? Um, she and her graduate students gave puzzles to fifth graders, and um, some of them, they all have, were of equal ability. Some kids, when they got a hard puzzle, you know, really worked through it and said, oh, I love this. I love hard puzzles. And they ended up being able to actually solve things that, um, they might not, have been, they might not been, have been able to solve, or she wouldn't have thought they could solve, just because of their attitudes. And then other kids, when they got the hard puzzles, just kind of quit, said, you know, I can't do this. And so that made her think that just their definitions of ability were different. This one group who persevered thought ability could grow and change, and this other group that didn't persevere saw ability as a fixed thing. And she realized that with herself, she, was, she almost had um, you know, she had grown up with a fixed mindset about herself. You're either smart or you're not smart. And her own research, you know, on mindset kind of guided her along and helped her kind of wade into this, um, this experimental work where she was really challenging this idea at the time that about, you know, you just have an IQ, you can do what you can do. Um, this was research that was not easily going to be published. Uh, she had grad students. She wanted them to publish so they could get jobs. And so she had a lot of anxiety about doing this new kind of work. Um, but she said that she really, she took the, the findings of her own research and used it herself. So when you're doing something new and the editor and peer reviewers aren't familiar with it, it can take longer than usual to publish. But with every rejection, I said, OK, what do I learn from this? How do I make it better? Um, and you know, her work on mindset is now you know, being used around the world. Um, so this is, I think, a good context in which to start the conversation about how each of us deals with, um, you know, mistakes and failures, uh, risks that didn't go well. Um, and I think what's really neat about the Dweck stuff is that you can, 
you know, there might be parts of your life in which you do have a growth mindset and other parts of your life in which you have a fixed mindset. Like I moved here from New York and I just never really drove. So I saw driving as something like, oh, you, you know, I don't know how to do that. I can't do it. Um, and I had to really, I've had to really coach myself, like you can get better at driving, you know, if you just drive. And I think there's a lot of things like that in our lives where we can take, um, you know, maybe we have a growth mindset, you know, in our relationships or as parents, but not so much in some kind of task at work.